From the beautiful campus of Casper College, it's time to dive into the world of Casper College Athletics with another episode of the Casper College Coaches Show. Now here's your host, Phil Kohler. Welcome fans to the Casper College Coaches Show. I'm your host, Phil Kohler, joined as always by the head coach of the Thunderbirds, Hi, Phil. Coach Dwight Ganeri. Coach, good to have you back as always. Always great. Appreciate hey, it. You guys coming off of another big win, moved to 21-5 yeah. and five overall, 7-1 and one in the conference, ranked 22 in the country last week. Mm -hmm. Give us a little bit of rundown uh, on that big win against Gillette. It was a good one. It was, you know, there was some emotion because it was sophomore night, sure. our last, potentially our last home game for the season. We hope not. And uh, uh, again, Gillette is back in their first year here and they have some good components and they're very capable of, of putting a good 40 minutes together. So, you know, we were concerned a little bit about their inside game and their rebounding and um, overall I was pleased to get the win there and, and play as well as we did. Absolutely. And you have four players in double figures led mm -hmm. by Angela Astorga. And while we're talking about Angela and sophomore night, I want to give you a chance to kind of talk about that ah. present that you got uh, ah. during the senior night or sophomore night festivities mm -hmm. during the boys game. You're Unbelievable, yeah. very, very surprising. Uh, Coach Macy and I both, were, you know, it's, it feels like an honor sure. almost. And, you know, and it's pretty humbling uh, to, to get such a, such a gift and, and handmade all the time and, and effort put into, if I'm understanding correctly, her grandfather made the beaded necklace and, and family made the, the star quilt, which, um, you know, it's already on one of my beds at home. Yeah. And, and uh, it, it, it was, it was very, very great great rec uh, great honor and sure. um very meaningful to both yeah. coach macy and myself well just how thoughtful you know yeah, I, I absolutely figure a, a sophomore gift you know you get a picture of you with the student and yes. maybe it's signed or something yes. like that but yeah. just really outside of the box and what a beautiful gift yeah. to, to receive for, for you and it'll always be something that will be in my sure. my home in a memory absolutely. that's for sure that's great so let's talk basketball here you guys win the game 72 to 52 um, last week we talked about how important it was going to be winning the boards. You yeah. guys are plus seven in the rebound column. Yeah. How how good did you feel about that effort? Oh, good. And, and it is a key against um, Gillette especially. Stefano is a very good rebounder. Nisbet's a very good rebounder. Uh, they had Beckford back, who yeah. who is also a very good offensive rebounder. Sure. They had three of them with 60-plus offensive rebounds on the season, which is a high stat. So I do think that was a key uh, f to us limiting their scoring opportunities, and that's one of the reasons why we held them to 52 points. Sure. Well, and in the second half, you got an opportunity to play a lot of kids. Yeah. The game we kind of got out of reach. When you get into a situation like that where you guys are up big and it's the second half and you start to use your bench players, what exactly would you say you're looking for in that situation? Are you trying to figure out a rotation piece? Are you kind of seeing who's going to step up? What are you, what are you looking for there? A, a little bit of everything, and that's part of it. You know, you you – Getting game, getting practice reps, and what we observe in practice is is a very good tool, and probably one of our key tools of evaluation is what have you done in practices and those kind of things. But you also have to get them game reps in there where you can evaluate what they do in games. So yeah, we do accomplish, uh, or we do try to uh, develop our bench. You never know; you're an injury or two away from someone yeah. that's been playing six minutes a game that's got to give us 16 minutes a game. And how do you ask you know them to contribute if they don't get opportunities? To to, to play in a game. So I really, every opportunity I get to extend our bench and, and play that, I think it, it's, it, it can have big benefits down the stretch. And I, I understand and I respect a player. You know, it is hard to work your tail off every day in practice and then sometimes not see the floor. So I, I, I respect their position. And so, you know, we, we really try to get them in the game as much as possible, as much as games dictate. And and, um, you know, and I really appreciate our bench and our team for staying involved, even though they don't get into the game, some of our players. And, and I, I'll go back to uh, our wins. Our wins, I think a lot of our wins come from our preparation and practice. And if we don't have everybody on the team that is, is locked in on practice and in trying to help us in our preparation, we don't win those games. So you might not be on the floor at the time to help us win, but you've done it all week. Well, and even during a game situation, you, you look at your bench and you can tell the culture at Casper College right now, those girls are up cheering, you know, yeah. even the ones that still have their shooting shirt on. They haven't been in the game yet, but man, they are the loudest fans that are there. And especially, I'm sure, on the road, the, maybe the only fans in the whole building. Absolutely. For you. And you don't know how much I respect that. Mm -hmm. I, I know it's hard to sit there, and I know they believe their abilities and those kind of things. And to put their, their self aside and, and uh, 
cheer for the group instead of the individual is it's just it's a maturity respect that I have for them and and um, it, it doesn't come easy it's hard and I understand how difficult it is for them absolutely well and you've had the opportunity you've gotten a couple of, of key performances off the bench the last couple of weeks from Angela Storga and then Anna Cheney as well who do you feel like stood out in that group that finally got a chance you know to kind of get some minutes there what did you see from that group and, and who kind of stood out in that I, group? I think there's two and, and one has been a well both have been trending um, Sayua San Francisco has really been trending yeah. um, the last two or three weeks, not just offensively, but she's taking care of the ball better, yeah. not turning it over. Her defense has improved. So I think she's been trending. And then another one that's been trending and it kind of a, it exploded a little bit was uh, Paula Barajas. Yeah. And she had a really nice game, 10 points. And, you know, there's still some things that she needs to improve on in her blocking out and those kind of things because a lot of times she's undersized inside. And so I understand it's not so easy to block out 6-1 when you're 5-11 if, if that sure, you know yeah. but I thought both of those um, have been trending and it really showed up in that game against Gillette yeah and like we've been talking about I mean it's going to play such a huge piece in the region 100%. 9 tournament because again you don't know who it's going to be but somebody's yeah. probably going to have to step up and we're going to be talking about that player here in a few weeks yeah for sure and you know we've had very consistent play and from uh, Angela and Anna coming off the bench, extremely consistent and a big benefit to our team. But we're going to need more than two. And, and again, we're, we're constantly looking in practice for it. And those minutes you were talking about in the game, when you, I think a role player, and I know I'm going off on a little segue here, but I think the role player has the toughest job in the world Absolutely. because when you do get your two, three, four, five minutes, You've, you've got you've to put something on tape there, sure. and it's really hard. You sit for 28 minutes, 30 minutes, and now i got to come out there and yeah. be as good or better than anybody else tonight. It, it's hard. Absolutely. So I, I appreciate that group a lot. Sure. Well, and never knowing if you're even going to go in the game 100%. or not. hundred percent. But, yeah. but having and to stay active. engaged. And yeah, yes. Is, yeah. Well, and you've got a great group of those ones, yes. that's for sure. And, yep. and uh, we're going to see them on display again on Wednesday night as you guys head up to mm -hmm. Powell, um, a rematch with Northwest. You guys played them a month ago, beat them mm -hmm. 84 to 65 down here. But a lot changes in a month. It does. And I do think that score is very misleading for yeah. where where the gap is between our two teams. I don't think there's a very big gap, if a gap, between between them. And, um, you know, the, they really remind me, Western Wyoming and Northwest, remind, they're very similar where they really have some scoring ability, especially on the perimeter. And, and I think Nicholson's playing a lot better or starting to get more minutes for them inside. And now they're, they have an inside presence as well. Yeah. But they can shoot shoot it and, sure. and they have two or three three-point shooters that if if two of those are having a night we're gonna have a handful yeah absolutely they come in 15 and 11 overall um, but again that last time that you guys played them they had three starters and double figures including <laughs> Rogers and uh, Anna Talua. Yeah, uh, I think good job. We've been with. trying. <laughs> yeah. uh, they combined for 36 points, but more than that, I mean, nine for 20 from three. Yes. You really are going to have to get a hand out. Is that going to be kind of the key for that one? I think so. I yeah. think the three-point line, they, they can attack the rim, and they do have inside game. There's nothing, that, that's for sure, but it is the three. And I, I watched their game against Central on Saturday afternoon because we were off, and I think they were seven for 15 on threes in the first half. Sure. And um, – uh, Phillips, uh, I think she had four or five threes in that game, so we hadn't mentioned her, and she's very, very capable um, of putting it in the hoop. And if you remember when we first played, I think they jumped on us 11 to 2 or maybe 14 to 5 or something yeah. and hit three, four threes right away to start the game. So if, if that's a 40-minute affair, we're, we're going to have – we're going to have to be pretty good on offense sure. ourselves. Well, and you guys in that first matchup, plus 19 on the boards. Yeah. I mean, that's yeah. that's a big number, yeah. too, and probably not sustainable, but it, that's got to be a key as well. It does. If we we need to have that possession, we have to limit their possessions because, sure. again, that's a team. I think they scored 85 on Saturday. That's a team that can do it if they're knocking down their threes, and if you keep giving them extra possessions, you're just giving another opportunity to put another three spot on the board. Absolutely. Well, then let's move on to Saturday. You guys are traveling to Riverton for mm -hmm. the second of the last four road games yeah. of the season. Yeah. You guys are at Central Saturday, 2 o'clock. First time you guys played them, obviously pretty one-sided. Um, how do you how do you convince the kids that you know that first game is is in the past and this is a this is a brand new game? You know that that'll be the focus as soon as Wednesday's game is over. Yeah. We'll start working on that. But the biggest mistake is if we we if we take anything at all from that first game. If yeah. we if 
anytime, anytime you play opponent uh, the second time, it has no bearing on the first time unless you learn some lessons and, and you make some improvements. So one is we, we, we should approach the game regardless of the outcome, win or lose from the previous time. We should approach the game the same way all the way through it. And that's what we strive for. And this group's been pretty good about that. And, you know, it, they too. They, they have two very good three-point shooters and their post player Sawyer's coming along very well. Actually, I'll give them three. Uh, nice three-point shooters. They had a huge win against Eastern Wyoming yeah. there, who you know is is Second a half a game and, yeah. behind us right, right now. Yeah. So, and that was at home for them. So, uh, I can assure you that I'm not going to read anything into the last game, and we will give it 100% preparation. Well, uh, and, for and obviously going on the road always going to be a little bit more yes. challenging. Yep. Um, that gym can fill up, especially on a Saturday it does. afternoon. It's a great it's, environment. Yeah, that it, is it, one of the better environments in yeah. Region Nine. Outside Absolutely. of Casper College. Of course, College. Of course. Yes. yeah. Um, but it should be a fun opportunity for you yes. guys to go and, and play some basketball. Um, Coach, give us a key for that one. Obviously, the first time you guys did so many things well, what's one thing that you really have to focus on for that game? You know, it, it's kind of a lot of the way offenses are going nowadays. They've, they're, they're a good dribble drive team, too, as well. And they're starting to get an interior presence. Um, but they're good at driving and kicking, yeah. you know, and those kind of things. And they do have three three-point shooters. Again, it really comes down to containing the dribble. If you can be, if you can contain the dribble and don't have to rely on help defense, you can really eliminate you know, a lot of scoring opportunities for a lot of teams now. Sure. Well, and something that you're going to see from the South as well. Yes. Um, so a great opportunity for you to uh, work against something that you're going to definitely see in the Region 9 tournament. It is, and it's it's a big trend. It's a trending sure, thing right course, now. Yeah. And and teams, I think, recruit to that style of play. And and the other key component is is we, we've got to do it in a way where we're not sending teams to the free throw line. I think yeah. we've Gillette's shot 23 free throws against us. And, you know, it, it – it was difficult, you know, there was a couple times where, you know, I thought we defended well, but that's, that's always going to be subjective and yeah. stuff. So we got to do a better job of uh, not allowing teams to get to the free throw line. Yeah, that old school back to the basket type players is really phasing out it, it, across the board. Your true five yeah. back to the basket, you know, playing from 12 feet and in is getting rare. I think a lot of teams go with the athletic and the versatile, yeah, sure. uh, maybe even undersized as far as, as height and weight. Uh, post play just because the style of the game has changed a little yeah, bit. It definitely has. Um, so then coach, last question for you. The, the schedule has changed this year. Last year you guys played Wednesday and Saturday and Wednesday and Saturday. This year it's kind of all over the board. I know Gillette last week went 12 days without playing a conference game. It, uh, what do you feel about it so far? What do you think? You know, I, I, don't, I don't know what the logic is behind it. In, in the past you know, not, and I'm not trying to insinuate anything, but in the past, you know, coaches from the North, two coaches, one was myself and one was uh, Steve Sosa from Western Wyoming, we worked on a master schedule and we worked on the Wednesday, Saturday yeah. uh, uh, component. And I, I just really love the continuity. We tried to make sure that nobody had more than two games on the road in, in succession sure. or two games. And we tried to balance home Saturdays, home Wednesdays, you know, and so we thought we had a really balanced schedule and then we'd flip it the next year and everybody was playing and you allowed a flex day if you were going to be traveling to two places in there. But that being said, I don't want to throw anybody under the bus. We've added a another team and right, now we're not course. even. Yes. So without myself working on that schedule, sure. I don't know. I don't know if it just, there's no way we could have had that parity and that yeah. balance. You know, I just, I, don't, I didn't put any work into sure. it. The ADs did that. And, you know, what I, I would like to get away from is the inconsistency. And like what you said, and I don't know if it's avoidable, but for Gillette to go 12 days. Right. That, in the middle of the season, we might have to do it in the postseason if we're fortunate enough to host. We might have to do that, but that's a different story. Well, to that point, too, I mean, you guys playing four road games in a row to end the season is uh, not exactly the no. most ideal coming down the stretch. No, that, that, that one... When it came out, it caught my attention right away. And, you know, we're, we're a half a game lead. There's a lot at stake. And, you know, of course, we're all playing the same amount of games, you know, at home as we are traveling. There's a balance. But, again, you know, just from the wear and tear. And, and now, you know, if things play out, our last um, – Last weekend is going to be probably what determines who hosts, and we got a back-to-back, -back, a Friday right. and a Saturday. Of course, yeah. you know, so yeah. it, it, 
I'm not a fan. Yeah. You know, but again, it doesn't matter. Sure. It is what it is. And if you're gonna if you're gonna get focused on what what might be fair, what might yes. not be fair, you're gonna lose a lot of games. We will be up to the challenge. Yep. Whatever the schedule tells us, we're playing. We're gonna be ready yeah. to play. Play the opponent that's yeah. on the schedule Let's go. And, and, <laughs> and go beat them. Yep. Coach. Yeah. Yep. That's the plan. <laughs> Absolutely. So, Coach, Wednesday night at five thirty. Yep. Um, in Powell on the uh, Northwest College yeah. uh, YouTube channel, and then Saturday two o'clock another one from Riverton yep. on that Riverton YouTube channel. Coach, best of luck to you this week. Appreciate any, any it. Any following thoughts? Uh, just, you know, we're getting down to crunch time right now. And, you know, I think there's there's some realization that, hey, we better take advantage of every opportunity we have yeah. because it's limited. Sure. There's no, yeah. not a lot of guarantees. So it is crazy how fast the end sneaks up on you. And um, we're getting close there. But I, I think the team's in a good place and we're going to go on a nice little run here. Absolutely. And we look forward to cheering you on from, right. from Casper or if we're able to get out. And That'd be awesome. I, I'd love to go to Riverton on Saturday. I'm looking at that trip as a potential That'd be awesome. opportunity yep. for me. So fans, remember, always shoot for the stars because even if you miss, there's always a chance for an offensive rebound. Thanks for joining us.